Good and gracious God, as we have gathered here to study your word, we pray that in this time your spirit fills every part of who we are, so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts are acceptable in your sight. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, today is the start of Lent. Like I said, we're starting a theme. We're talking about meeting Jesus at the table. And I realize this may seem a little funny at first because typically when you think about Lent, you may be like, well, aren't we supposed to fast? And we're not supposed to be feasting. Then we're talking about meals at every church service. Stick with me. Food is a huge part of the Bible. It's in there everywhere. And in particular, food is a huge part of Jesus' ministry. Almost all of the major events of Jesus' ministry have food in them or very close to them. And if we want Lent to be a time where we learn more about Jesus, where we walk alongside Jesus on this journey, then one way to do that is to talk about how Jesus uses food in his ministry. And not just food, but meals, meeting people at the table. And not just a table, because today, obviously, there wasn't a table out in the wilderness, but there was a shared meal. So what can we learn about Jesus from this shared meal? Today, in order to do that, we're going to use a pun square. All my scientists are like, yes! Everyone else is like, bro, what? <laughs> so, a pun square is something that you use. I learned it in eighth grade science when we were talking about um, genes, dominant genes, and recessive genes. Like, uh, you have big R, little R, big R, little R, and you figure out which is the dominant, like, blue eyes or brown eyes, or whether your earlobes are connected, or whether they're not. Today, we're using the fun and square for Jesus. <laughs> so, there are two types of feeding happening in this scripture, yes? One is the very obvious one where some people are being fed in their stomachs. And then the other one is that people are being fed spiritually. So, there are two combinations of those. You can have a full stomach. I was going to try to color coordinate this, but now I'm not going to be able to think of it while I'm up here. You have a full stomach and a full spirit. You can have a full stomach. And an empty spirit, right? That's the next combination. You can have an empty stomach but a full spirit. See, these are the opposites. So full stomach, empty spirit, empty stomach, full spirit. And then the last one is empty, empty. You're like, we're all scientists, we got it. <laughs> this is great. <clears throat> this is like the stuff that gives me nightmares of like, will I sell words wrong? And then you all give a let me. Okay. So, we're going to talk about this in three phases. And I have three characters from the story. I know there are more than three people, but I'm calling them three characters. First, we have Jesus, one person, one character. Second, we have the disciples. Third, we have the crowd. And now we're going to talk about where they are in three parts of the story. At the beginning of the scripture, when Jesus says, come away, 
We need to rest. You've been out doing your ministry a couple chapters before. Jesus sent them out two by two to go do healings and preachings and ministry. And they've all come back. They haven't had even a moment to eat. Where is Jesus at the start of the story? Which square do you think he's in? Lower right. Lower right. So empty, empty. I think that makes sense. I'm having time to eat. He's like, we need to go rest. We need to do some self-care. We need to go away to the desert retreat center and like have a couple minutes. Where do you think the disciples would be? Same place? I'm going to say same place. At the start of the story, where's the crowd? All right, fast forward to the middle of the story. The crowd has followed Jesus and the disciples. Jesus feels compassion for them. Jesus is teaching them. And then he, Jesus says, you go get them something to eat. The disciples are like, oh my gosh, send them away, we're exhausted. Jesus says, you get them something to eat. Where's the crowd? Where is the crowd after Jesus has been preaching all day? What do you think? Lord. I'm going to say, yeah, empty stomach, full spirit. Right? Jesus has been preaching, but they're hungry. They need to go to empty stomach, full spirit. Where were the disciples? Still there, maybe? I'm going to argue, though. I'm going to put them at full stomach, empty spirit. Not because maybe they had time to eat, but what happens next is they pull out the food that they have, right? They know they have in the immediate future the potential to eat. And there's a difference when you're hungry and you know that the food is cooking and you're going to eat it in five minutes, and when you're hungry and you don't know when you're going to eat next, right? So I'm on the, I'm up here, so I'm going to go up here. So full stomach, empty spirit. Where is Jesus? Where do you think he is, Simon? He's up in the left. Top right, up here with the disciples. Top left, full sun and full spirit. Yeah. That's a good one. I feel like he's dancing the line between these two, right? Oh, you didn't know the lines were not okay. <laughs> um, full spirit. You know the feeling when you're exhausted and you know you need to rest? And then your best friend calls, and you're like, I really just want to take a nap. But you talk for a little while, and you hang up the phone, and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that I needed that. So maybe you were already tired. And sometimes when you are, when the well is completely empty, no, no amount of keeping to work and keeping the hustle going is going to fix it. But sometimes, like in this case, I think Jesus needed to rest but it says that he felt all that compassion, and then after preaching, I think he's got the full spirit right now. And he probably would have been in the crowd of like, was hungry, but you know, knew that he had a meal coming along. All right, now fast forward to the end of the story. All have been fed. There's twelve baskets of food left over. Where is the crowd now? Full, full. I'm going to go ahead and put Jesus up there too, right? He got off the line and he's going to say, Where are the disciples? This one depends on your interpretation. Did they learn their lesson? I don't know. I'm going to say that they did because a lot of times, especially in the Gospels, when the story, when the scripture pericope ends, if the disciples didn't get it, it says so. It says something like, and they left talking to each other in confusion, or they still bickered, or da, da, da. and there's none of that here, so I'm going to put disciples under full stomach, full spirit as well. Jesus wants everyone to equally have a full stomach and a full this is what Jesus' hope is for us. 
You can think about other Bible stories that might help show why this is the way it is. It's pretty easy to see why God doesn't want us all to have empty stomachs and empty spirits, right? That's obvious. That would be bad for everyone. And it's also pretty easy to see why God, why Jesus doesn't want us to have full stomachs but an empty spirit. I think about any story with uh, the Pharisees or the Sadducees or anyone in power who would have had enough money to be eating, but uh, Jesus talks a lot about how their spiritual life is empty. We just read the scripture on Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday, about all the people who are going out and putting on a big show of their religious piety in the streets, and Jesus is like, don't do that. That's not what you want. Or um, think about the story of the rich man who says, Jesus, what does it take for me to follow you? And Jesus is like, give away your stuff. And he's like, oh, no, we can't do that. So rich man would have had a full stomach, but an empty spiritual life. Or uh, the other one that I think of in that same category is when Jesus tells the parable of the lost son, the older brother, right, who stays at home the whole time would have a full stomach but has this empty spirit because he's um, has missed out on his father's love the whole time. So that's that was pretty easy too to see why Jesus doesn't want us to be here. Empty spirit, full spirit is a little trickier because we can say things like, "Well, Jesus fasted for forty days." Or there's the passage where the widow gives her last two coins, and Jesus says, look at this wonderful woman of faith, that's amazing. But he doesn't say, look at this wonderful woman of faith, that's amazing, also we should give her a sandwich, right? So we might fall into like, I don't know, that's not bad. Does Jesus really care? Like if we have a full spirit, isn't that, that's fine, that's okay, right? But here's the thing. This is not what Jesus wants for us. This scripture almost alone proves that. This scripture that we just read, the feeding of the multitude in four gospels is repeated six times. The story of Jesus' birth comes twice. The story where Jesus is feeding thousands of people appears six times. Having a full stomach is important to God. Too. Now, you're like, okay, yeah, obviously we want people to be fed, but here's something that when I was thinking about this this week that I have found that I do sometimes that where I'd be like, Jesus is fine with this, and I don't think that's right, so I have to work on it myself. You go on a mission trip, and you're on the mission trip, and wherever it is that you are, whether it's Chicago or our own neighborhood or around the world, whatever, you are working with people who have less than you have. And you come home, and people are like, I don't want that. And you're like, oh my gosh, the people I was working with had so much spirit. They had so much faith. It was so inspiring. And then, that's the story I tell myself, and I forget that they're also really hungry. And it's not bad to uplift people that have a great amount of spirit. But to then forget that they have empty stomachs, that's where the problem comes in. So this is not what Jesus wants for us either. Jesus wants everyone to have full spirits, full stomachs. What's more is that Jesus wants this to be a team effort. Jesus is God. Jesus could do whatever Jesus wants out there in the wilderness. Jesus turned water into wine on his own. God makes manna fall from heaven in Exodus 16 without the Israelites doing anything. Jesus doesn't have to involve the disciples, but he wants to. He turns this into a group project. You get them something to eat. Jesus wants all of us to have full stomachs and full spirits, and he wants all of us to work towards making that happen not just a Jesus project. And aren't we so lucky that the disciples took care of it 2,000 years ago, and now everyone all of the time has full spirits and full stomachs, yes? No, of course not. This is still 2,000 years later, a group project that has not been turned in yet. We are still working on it. 
So this Lent, what are we going to do to move people towards full stomachs and full spirits? I don't know if you know, but on March 1st, which is this Wednesday, that's when the federal money that was extra during the length of COVID for people who have snack cards, if you don't know what a snack card is, it's like food stamps, but in a different way. Since April 2020, you had extra money on your snack card. That ends March 1st, this Wednesday. $95 disappears for your family to eat in a month when groceries have never been more expensive. This lens, what are we going to do to help keep people's stomachs filled? And this lens, what are we going to do to help keep people's spirits filled? I don't have a fun fact with percentages or dates or numbers for that one, but when was the last time that you asked somebody, how is your spirit doing? Not how are you doing, but how is your spirit doing? Do you feel full? Or do you feel like you're running on fumes? We have a couple spaces that we could include some more people. And may I suggest the Tuesday dinner would be win-win for you. You'd be filling a stomach and a spirit. If that's not stars in your heaven, I don't know. Jesus wants us to have full stomachs and full spirits. Jesus wants everyone to have full stomachs and full spirits. So this Lent, what are we going to do about it?